It's time to get your news on. We are VK1 WIA. Yes, it certainly is. The WIA National News Service. In our 28th year of non-stop news, this edition for August the 6th, 2023. And probably our last portable operation for a while. Those that have listened for the last few weeks have noticed that we have been operating portable. Well, the final stop on the tour. Yep, VK7. And I'd like to give you a warm welcome to the show, but let me tell you, it's cold down here. Now, apologies also to Justin and Tony for not popping in to see you, but we just did not have the time. But we've got the time for you now, certainly the next 30 minutes. The best news you'll get all week from your WIA. I'm Editor Graham, VK4BB. This news originates from the Wireless Institute of Australia. Dreaming, believing, achieving. We are VK1 WIA. Now with international news, Jason, VK2 LAW. Hello. Leading this week's international news from Region 1, a second and very brief activation of the remote granite islet known as Rockall was called off after hazardous conditions in the North Atlantic had forced a team of three to return to the mainland. They had to turn back after making several passes of Rockall. The trio was travelling to recover radio equipment left there during the June activation of Mike Mike Zero Uniform Kilo India. Describing the team's failed attempt to return, one would-be rescuer wrote on the Rockall D Expedition's Facebook page, quote, Nature has said no. We reached Rockall without difficulty, but the waves were extremely high. That's the way of life, end quote. Don't be discouraged. The team plans another recovery attempt. IARU Monitoring Service in Region 1 has reported on interference from illegal stations, particularly here in Region 3. Every Tuesday, monitors could hear the splatter from 21.455 kHz to 21.450 kHz from 1000 to 1100 UTC caused by the broadcasting station Radio Free Asia transmitting from Tinian Island on 21.455 kHz, but it was disturbed by a Chinese 20 kHz wide jammer. Village Radio SSB communications from Region 3 were heard on 40, 12 and 15 metres, as well as pirates on 15 metres and CBers on the 10 metre band. Also, the annoying Spanish fishers, always the same for years, were heard transmitting on 21.000 kHz USB as usual, very often. Of the 10 metre band also received were illegal fishing buoys, transmitting a CW2 or 3 letter code to help fishers radio locating their nets, and others using short FSK, sending their ID and position encrypted. Now, for newcomers, IARU is the Worldwide Federation of National Amateur Radio Organisations. The IARU membership consists of more than 160 member societies in and as many countries and separate territories. WIA is your only Australian member organisation. In news from Region 2, the Enforcement Bureau of the US Federal Communications Commission, FCC, is continuing its active efforts, as I reported last week, to curb pirate radio operations across the country, issuing notices to three separate operators. Notices of apparent liability for forfeiture were issued to two pirate radio operators, one in Burnie, California, and the other in Rockford, Illinois. In the first instance, the operator was found to have willfully and repeatedly interfered with radio communications of the Western Amateur Radio Friendship Association, WARFA, during the association's regularly scheduled on-air meetings. In the second case, the operator made multiple one-way radio transmissions for an extended period of time, including recorded comedy routines, air raid sirens and digital noises. One transmission observed by an Enforcement Bureau field agent continued for over 30 minutes, during which time other users were blocked from accessing the channel. The FCC proposed financial penalties of $24,000 and $25,000 respectively in these cases. In a separate action, the FCC issued a notice of unlicensed operation to a Utica, New York operator who reportedly made unauthorised transmissions on frequencies used for police dispatch communications in Herkimer County, New York. 
The operator was given 10 days to cease the illegal interference and to notify the FCC of the specific steps they've taken to avoid operating on the unlicensed frequencies in the future. The ARRL board has voted to increase membership dues starting January 1st, 2024. In addition, members will be required to pay $25 US on top of the membership dues in order to continue receiving printed copies of ARRL magazines such as QST and On The Air. Membership plus QST delivered first-class mail in the USA would equate to $132 US per annum. As an example, that's close to $194 Australian dollars. ARRL President Rick Roderick called the dues increase a necessary part of ensuring ARRL is supported so we can continue to promote and fight hard for our amateur radio service. And to IARU Region 3, the National Centre for Polar and Ocean Research, an autonomous institution under the Ministry of Earth Sciences, Government of India, is currently accepting applications for the 43rd Indian Scientific Expedition to Antarctica. In the previous expedition, 42 ISEA, Sarabjit Singh Chabra, an amateur radio operator with the call sign Victor Uniform 2 Charlie Uniform Whiskey, was chosen as the radio operator. For the upcoming expedition, 43rd ISEA, three amateurs will be included in the team. The Japan Amateur Radio League, JARL, has announced the return of JARL Ham Fair for 2023, this being the 45th event and expects to attract 30,000 visitors. The Ham Fair will take place August 19th and 20th. For VK1 WIA National News, in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. From here, there and everywhere... You've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1 WIA. Now, operational news with Felix, VK4 FUQ. Hello there. And as you know, ham radio, it's a contact sport. And what a better way than to have a host of contacts in our contest of contests, August 12 and 13, our Remembrance Day contest. Here now is WIARD Contest Manager, VK4SN, Alan. The Remembrance Day Contest is where we remember those 26 amateurs who paid the supreme sacrifice. Contest starts from 0300 Zulu Saturday, the 12th of August, until 0300 Zulu on Sunday the 13th. Categories are Single Operator, Single Operator QRP, Multi One and Multi Multi, using phone, CW slash Ritty or Mix Mode. Contacts can be reworked after three hours have elapsed. There are no blocks in the RD, just three hours between the same contact. If you're in it to win, then staying up for triple points between 1am and 6am local time is the go. VKCL Logger and N1MM Logger are the preferred logging software. Make sure you're running the latest versions. Please submit team nominations via email vk4sn at wia.org.au with your three operator call signs and a mailing address. A team consists of any three stations using a single transmitter that is a single operator or a multi-operator single radio station. Just submit the log as normal and your submitted team scores are added together by the manager to produce the team results. Remember to send your log in within two weeks after the contest. Many thanks and good luck. This is Alan, VK4, Sierra November. August 26-27, Alara Contest. All licensed operators throughout the world are invited to participate. Scout and Girl Guide groups are encouraged to participate using their club's equipment and call sign. YLs work everyone. OMs work YLs only. Combined phone and CW run over 24 hours. Saturday 0600 hours UTC till Sunday 0559 hours UTC. All HF bands except 160 meters and WARC bands. Echo Link will also be accepted. October Oceania DX contest. Phone October 7 8. 0600 hours UTC Saturday to 0600 hours UTC Sunday. CW October 14 15. Again, times are 0600 hours UTC Saturday to 0600 hours UTC Sunday. Log deadline for all phone and CW logs, 31 October. VHF UHF Field Day. Let's check in with Roger, 
VK2ZRH. Thank you, Felix. Good morning, all VHF, UHF microwave contesters. This is Roger Harrison, VK2ZRH, erstwhile manager of the VHF, UHF microwave contests. Now that the 2023 winter event is done and yet to be dusted, so to speak, I'm here to draw your attention to the fact that I have completed compilation of the results of the logs submitted for the 2022 summer event and posted them on the website. One of these fine days, I will catch up with you. Something that sustains me in this exercise is the sight of logs coming from more geographically scattered areas, and by that I mean VK6s and VK7s, who were rare participants when I took on this work. I'm also sustained by seeing logs from the stalwarts who maintain interest and activity throughout the years. And another thing, an encouraging number of contestants entering logs that include the bands up to 120 gigs. Great to see. Also, I particularly note that small band of foundation and standard licensees having a crack on the band above 50 megs. And, along with this, I've become aware of those few contestants that have taken that next step on the licensing ladder and continue their participation in these contest events. Keep it up, people. This has been Roger Harrison, VK2ZRH, for VK1WIA News. Dex Window, August. VI10 VKFF running all year celebrates the 10th anniversary of the VKFF group. Special event station VI100MB all year celebrates the centenary of the Manly Warringah Radio Society. China. QRV is BY2 stroke K6FA until the middle of August. HF bands using mainly CW. QSL viral OTW. Republic of Korea. Vata is on the air to August 16 as HL4 stroke PB1WL QSL to Alta's home call PB1WL Morocco Michelle F5LRL is operating from near Kenitra as CN2DX until August 16 from 4 to 6 metres using CW and SSB mainly in his morning and evening QSL CN2DX via home call which again is F5LRL Iceland, MEC, SP7BC and Cassia, SQ7OYL, will be operating as TF-SP7BC until August 17. They are travelling by motorhome, so are able to take all their needed amateur radio equipment. They are planning to be active on 14 MHz. Listen for the special event call sign A60AP which is on the air until the 31st of August. The subject stands for the Emirates Astronaut Program, which prepares crews of UAE astronauts for missions that include the International Space Station. QSL via EA7FTR. A DX achievement of two lifetimes. Our final look through the DX window today is a story. A story that isn't about the DX achievement of a lifetime, it's about a personal tribute. Patrick Clark, KATAC, brings us that story now. For some, a contact with Bobe Island, considered the most remote island on Earth, is like winning the lottery. But for Bob Wirtz, NF7E, it means so much more in the amateur radio lexicon. The QSO he logged earlier this year with a 3Y0J de-expedition ended his 47-year journey to log all 340 independent DXCC entities. The ARRL requires contacts with only 331 such entities for any ham to be included on its DXCC honor roll. Clearly, Bob had his sights set on a higher mountain. His personal challenge began nearly a half a century ago. Speaking of mountains, the impressive log he's amassed toward that end includes another remote contact, Mount Athos in Greece, where the operator was Monk Apollo. Their QSO, using CW, took place in 2016. Monk Apollo, who was now a silent key, was viewed by DXers as one of the most sought-after contacts. Bob at one point thought it might end up being the most difficult contact since he became a ham in 1976. Beauvais, however, filled that role nicely. It also allowed him to fulfill a very personal and perhaps most 
meaningful goal. In an interview with the Flagstaff Business News, he said he considers his completion of the challenge to be a tribute to his father, who held the call sign of KA9ACS and is now a silent key. This is Patrick Clark, K8TAC. Thanks, Patrick. Now from Ingham, I'm Felix VK for FUQ. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1 WIA. Now, special interest group news with Cole, VK3 GTV. Hello, welcome to the segment. First up, it's Worldwide Flora and Fauna Program, Parks on the Air and SOTA. Summits on the Air, SOTA, in North America, has three events scheduled this weekend between August 4 and 7. The Colorado 14er event will run from August 4 to 7. The SoCal SOTA Fest in Southern California will run from August 4 to 6. And the Pacific Northwest Not Quite 14er event will run from August 5 to 6 and includes climbers in Washington and Oregon. SOTA is the worldwide award scheme for radio amateurs that encourages portable operation in mountainous areas. It provides opportunities for summit climbers, known as activators, to scale some of the highest peaks and contact amateur radio stations locally and around the world. Many different frequencies and modes will be used during the August events, but interestingly, in the USA there's a North America adventure frequency for SOTA on 2 metres, 148.580 148.580 MHz. Worldwide Special Interest Groups. Astronomy. QRM playing havoc with astronomy. Large satellite constellations that provide detailed Earth imagery as well as broadband internet access to some regions have been shown to emit unintended electromagnetic radiation that may prove a challenge to radio astronomers' research. Scientists at the Max Planck Institute for Radio Astronomy in Germany report that interfering signals appear to come from the electronics on board a number of SpaceX satellites. Writing in the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics, the researchers said that they made the discovery using the facility's Low Frequency Array Telescope. They drew their conclusions after observing 68 of the satellites in low Earth orbit. The report's lead author, Frederico de Bruno said the study represents the latest effort to better understand satellite constellations' impact on radio astronomy. The scientist said that the most recent observations confirm that there is a measurable existence of the radiation. Worldwide Special Interest Group News, ATV, Every Pixel Tells a Story. A new amateur TV display has just been installed at the RSGB National Radio Centre with signals received via a wideband segment of the geostationary satellite QO100. Any trip to the motherland demands a visit to the NRC, and this new display and demonstration of amateur TV as a permanent display helps highlight yet another exciting aspect of our technical hobby. A special configuration developed in conjunction with the British Amateur Television Club incorporates a touchscreen from which visitors can select a signal to be tuned, decoded and displayed on the large monitor. Student journalist makes video of GB23C SSES. Colin Butler, writing in ICQ Podcast, tells us how back in May of this year, student journalist Alina visited the UK special event station GB23C, run by Crave Valley Radio Society, as part of the RSGBs. The video she's released includes interviews with members of CVRS talking about their equipment, making contacts around the world and other historical events the club has been involved in. And you can view the video on YouTube. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Faith, Churches and Chapels on the Air. With the details... It's over to fellow Bendagonian WIA reporter, Bruce, vk 3 F. This year, Chota is on Saturday, September the 9th. With the dramatic rise in parks on the air participation, getting churches on the air in a similar non-contest style would be enjoyable. Contact John, G3XYF. John only asks for activators to merely drop him a line with the call sign being used and the location of the church or chapel or other religious institution being activated. John will be using the call Golf Bravo Zero Lima Oscar Whiskey from his local church in the East Riding of Yorkshire. 
there is an award available for working any Chota stations on the Saturday of the event. Let's hope the conditions are good. Those claiming the award must contact eight or more Chota stations. Thanks, Bruce. Next up, it's Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. India's second attempt to land on the moon, Chandrayaan-3, launched last month. The mission is a replacement for Chandrayaan-2, which crashed while descending to the lunar surface in September 2019. Chandrayaan-3 is scheduled for an August 23 or 24 arrival. The lander and rover are scheduled to operate for one lunar day, which is about 14 Earth days. Worldwide Special Interest Group's IOTA, Islands on the Air. Last weekend, we saw the running of the RSGB IOTA contest, and many new to the IOTA scheme have been asking questions of exactly what it is. A list of island reference numbers and a guide for newcomers is available at the links we like in this week's August 6 WIA National News Script, which you can find on our website, wia.org.au. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Maritime, including ILLW News. A reminder now that the International Lighthouse and Lightship Weekend is the third weekend of August, which this year is on the 19th and 20th of August. To ensure that they're prepared for emergencies and extreme weather, many of we hams are accustomed to sharpening our responses through regularly scheduled drills. But the drill that's taking place next month in Mobile, Alabama, or how our American friends would pronounce it, Mobile, is for a major event that actually happened more than 70 years ago. It was World War II. Jack Parker, W8ISH, fills in the details. There will be a call to battle station sounded on Saturday, August 12th, and those aboard the battleship USS Alabama and the submarine USS Drum will be ready for what is to follow in Battleship Memorial Park. Vintage enemy aircraft will do a flyover in a mock attack. The crew on board the ships will fire the vessel's 20-millimeter guns. Meanwhile, radio communications will go forward with members of the Deep South Amateur Radio Club also on board, calling QRZ on 20 and 40 meters. They will be using the club call sign K4DSR and the call sign K5LDA. Unlike the radio amateurs, the crewmen are all reenactors. Dressed in World War II-era Navy uniforms, they will conduct weapons briefings and demonstrations while reliving some of the stories of that time. This is a living history crew drill designed to show the public just how things were in the heat of the war so many years ago. What the members of the living history crew share with the hams is that they are all volunteers. They show that they appreciate the spirit of volunteerism and education by conducting these drills to bring history to life again a few times each year. This is Jack Parker, W8ISH. Thanks, Jack. And speaking of things and amateurs who've been around for some time, let's catch up now with Clive with the latest Worldwide Special Interest Group's Radio Amateur Old Timers. Hello, everyone. This is Clive, VK6CSW. Reminding you that tomorrow is the first Monday of the month, time for the Radio Amateurs Old Timers Club of Australia's August Bulletin to go to air. This month, as well as the latest club news, I'll be talking about OBO, a British bomb aiming system, which was the forerunner of DME, or Distance Measuring Equipment. This will be followed by Bill, VK3BR, who talks about a book review on the Tatura Secret Radio. Everyone, RAOTC members and non-members alike, is most welcome to listen to the program and to join in the callbacks afterwards. Full details of all transmissions, times and modes can be found on the RAOTC website at www.raotc.org.au or just Google RAOTC Broadcasts. If none of the transmission times suit you, you can download the audio file at any time from today from the club website. Members and friends of the RAOTC in Perth are reminded that the next lunchtime meeting at the Woodbridge Hotel, East Guildford, will be held tomorrow, Tuesday, August the 8th. All are welcome, and further details are published on the club website. 7-3 from Clive, VK6CSW. Thanks, Clive, and once again, tune in tomorrow for the August RAOTC Bulletin. Enjoy the program, and please join in the callbacks afterwards. Now, from old-timers to youngsters on the air, Yota, here is VK2APC, Alec. 
Thank you, and congratulations to 19-year-old Keys Van Usby, W0AAE of Minnesota, who has been selected as the 2023 Bill Pasternak WA6ITF Memorial Amateur Radio Newsline Young Ham of the Year. Keyes was honoured for his leadership in helping other young amateurs through Youth on the Air and the Remote Ham Radio Youth Network. A visit to a museum with an amateur radio station at age 12 sparked his interest in becoming a ham. Studying on his own, he quickly earned his technician and general class licenses, then joined the Minnesota Wireless Association and developed his interest in contesting. HF was my life, Keyes said. Contesting is pretty much my main thing in amateur radio, although I do branch out and do other things. Among those other things is Yoda Americas, in which he has taken on a variety of leadership roles, including the training of youth operators, serving as a QSL manager for W8Y contacts made with Yoda campers and sharing his interest in remote operating. A 2023 graduate and class valedictorian of Heritage Christian Academy in his hometown, Keyes will be attending Iowa State University where he plans to study aerospace engineering. The YHOTY Award will be presented to Keyes during a ceremony at the Huntsville Ham Fest in Alabama on August 19th. Amateur Radio Newsline, CQ Magazine, and Yesu USA are primary sponsors of the award, along with the Heel Sound LTD and Radio Waves Antenna Company. For VK1 WIA National News, I'm Alec, VK2 APC in Sydney. Thanks, Alec. Next up, it's Worldwide Special Interest Group's Rescue Radio, IARU Region 3. The next Weiss and New South Wales monthly meetup is happening today, August 6, with another communications exercise being planned. To participate in any Weissen event, or just to find out more about Weiss and New South Wales, you can email Weissen, that's W-I-C-E-N, dot ops at vrarescue.org. Missed it? You can catch up with that link on the text edition of this broadcast. Weissen Nets are on every Sunday evening using FM Voice, DMR or HF Voice, depending on the week. All Weissen members and other amateurs are welcome to join in. Weissen New South Wales is a support squad of VRA Rescue New South Wales, specialising in tactical radio communications. In between activations, Weissen supports local community events. These provide practical training for members and help raise the public profile of amateur radio. And that wraps up the segment for this week. Till next time, stay safe and warm. I'm Col, VK3GTV. On the social scene in VK6, it's the Northern Corridor Radio Group's Hamfest that happens August the 20th. VK4, Redcliffe Car Boot Sale, Saturday, August 26th at the Clubhouse at Kippering. Now till next we meet and we're back up in VK4 where I'm sure it's going to be a little warmer than down here in Tassie. Anyway, thanks for listening and walk softly. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5 BD's ATV and YouTube channel. This has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.